Oh, what's going on, Yula? Welcome back with another video. I'm Lydia. I'm 22. I make mental health videos here on YouTube. Today's video, what going to my first ever psychiatrist appointment was like. To anyone who is new to my channel, I have been experiencing mental health issues since I was around 12 years old, which, you know, is a considerable amount of time. So, yeah, today is about my first ever psychiatrist appointment. My first psychiatrist appointment occurred when I was around 13 years old. I was diagnosed with anxiety and bipolar type 1. To, a two diagnosis that I still have to this day <laughs> this video is to share how I felt going to this appointment, what happened in the appointment. When you first go to see a psychiatrist, I know I'm not alone when I say this, everyone always thinks it's going to be you're going to get hospitalised or sectioned or forced into hospital. Or have forced. And before we even start, I want to just say that that's not how this works. That is not how the mental health system works at all. I was literally like, oh my god, I'm going to end up in hospital. I was terrified. I didn't want to go. I rearranged it twice. I was petrified. But I was also experiencing a lot. Now, I've been through a lot as a kid and I have spoken about this briefly, but my childhood is not something I talk about very often because it isn't. I was 13-ish when I went to CAMS, which is Children Analysis and Mental Health Services. And if you are interested in hearing more about CAMS, I do have a separate video on that also, which I will link up there. My first psychiatrist appointment. How did it happen? Where did it come from? I had been taken to a on a few occasions, experiencing psychosis, along with panic attacks, which led to seizures. And recently that was linked to me being stressed and is also part of the PTSD that I experienced, which is a whole video in itself. I remember getting a letter and I was, well, fearful. I was afraid. I didn't know much about mental health services. All I knew is what I'd seen in documentaries and in the documentaries I'd watched were about kids on inpatient wards. Mental health is something I'm passionate about and both live and, and live with. I went to my first appointment. It was in a school and it was kind of an odd feeling so I walked into this school that I didn't go to and I had to turn left to the NHS and then it comes but it was underneath a school and yeah it wasn't it was a very odd placement. So I checked in I went and sat in a chair and I saw parents with their kids and I said this a lot my mum has stood by me with my mental health she's never given a monkey to be honest. When I ended up sectioned she was like well she, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need to be in hospital you know if she's gonna kill yourself you'd have done it. My first psychiatrist appointment ended with me being prescribed lithium on a very low dose because, like I said, I was very young. I started on that and I did not react well to it. I got very dehydrated. No matter how much I drank, I just ended up dehydrated and I got taken off that very quickly. Literally a few weeks after that, I actually did end up getting hospitalised. Um, but I did try it. It didn't respond well to me. It made me really dehydrated and I just can't take it. When I was in hospital after that, I was starting on Defico, which I did mention in my bipolar story. And again, I linked up there. <laughs> Disappointment was so draining. My anxiety was horrific. Like, I was literally rocking backwards and forwards in the entire appointment. I got the gossip. So, I found that I just found the comms letter I was looking for. So, this was the letter that put me in referral to the first consultant. And this was from my comms practitioner, apparently. I'm pretty sure she's a support worker. i become quite concerned about Lydia because she, because she has become increasingly paranoid. Lydia was able to identify that she was more paranoid when home alone when she, which she stated has triggered panic attacks on several occasions. Lydia discussed that she finds it hard to cope with these thoughts. Lydia said, stated that this has decreased the amount of sleep she has had due to her persistent thoughts that something will happen to her. She's also been advised that should these thoughts occur in another location, she is to alert somebody who can help her. Previously, myself and Lydia had had conversations about her weight loss. Previously, Lydia had denied avoiding food. However, in this appointment, she s said that she was struggling and had been looking for new ways to avoid food online. In August, Lydia was started on a meal plan to try and increase her weight. However, Lydia admitted that she had not referred back to this document since. Lydia has allowed us to keep record of her weight from 21st September. Lydia had begun to increase the amount of food which she was consuming in this appointment which stated that she'd stopped eating due to how, how she was feeling about the si At the end of the appointment, Lydia's weight was checked due to the decrease in appetite. Lydia is currently 18.76% below the ideal healthy weight. Well, the damn. That letter is what led to the consultant becoming involved. And the consultant, like I said earlier, saw me on a number of occasions and eventually diagnosed me. So, 
the first mode that he started me on was lithium didn't go great I'm not gonna get into that but in the first appointment it was like full-on anxiety like full-on there was no hiding from it it was there and I wasn't getting away from it anytime soon <laughs> It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And that's what I want the message in this to be. Like, yes, it's always going to be scary going to appointments for the first time, even the second time, or even after you've been in the services for five years. Because you never know what's going to get thrown in. But I do want to throw that out there. It is very highly unlikely that you're going to walk into your first psychiatrist appointment and get sectioned. Like, that's not really how mental health services work. Unless you are literally going to go home and kill yourself. All in all, I think CAMS gets a lot of bad press and it's not unfounded. I don't know any people who've had good experiences and the first time I was in CAMS I didn't have a good experience. The second time round honestly was a waste of a year but at the end of the day it might be a shit service but I'm still alive so I guess there's that. You are walking into the unknown and that in itself is something that a lot of people fear. I'm definitely also in that category. I don't like not knowing what's going on. Which is why when I'm in hospital, I like knowing absolutely everything that is going on. Um, but yeah, my overall message in this is if you get referred to CAMS or any other service, go to the appointment, see what they have to say. It is not going to be the end of the world. <laughs> and it's okay to feel anxious about things. Anyway, it feels really weird filming a video because I've literally not filmed for over a week so apparently talking to a camera can become complex when you haven't spoke to one for a bit. I did try to the other day but this is how it turned out so we filmed today. Anyway I'm gonna go because I don't know what time it is but I don't want to sit and record for much longer because my camera is also flashing red. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out my little Etsy store if you want to support the channel a little bit I also have a Patreon and a PayPal you don't have to use it. My Amazon wish this is also down below because why not? Subscribe! I normally upload daily. I've just been on a bit of a break. That's that. Bye guys!